Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Everything on the arcade, everything on handhelds, everything on home consoles, and everything that we can find on home computers. We're playing all the video games released at some time in October 1982. Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Hello, I'm Jeff Wires. Welcome to Chronologically Gaming. We were last playing Star Trek games, quite a bit of Star Trek games, but we're not done. Our very next release is... Another Star Trek game for the Dragon 32. We will not escape Star Trek games. I don't believe we'll stop getting out of this area of video games until 1987, 88, maybe. So this one is Star Trek. Yep, just Star Trek. It's still not an official Star Trek. <laughs> it's all ripping off someone else. Here is Star Trek by Personal Software Services. The box on the Dragon 32. This one is our 31st game we've played for the Dragon 32. Your mission, destroy the Klingons. Like you do with all the other Star Trek games. So there you go. This is the box. All it does is say Star Trek. You're captain of the SS Enterprise. Your mission is defend the galaxy from the evil Klingons. Features include, and they say features because some of these Star Trek games include different things or have different scenarios. This one has battle computer, photon torpedoes, phasers, warp drive, impulse engines, and all that we got from the mainframe version from 1971. So it doesn't really tell us anything totally new involving Star Trek strategy games. Let's see what the other artwork we have for Star Trek. This one is the fourth game that we played by PSS or Personal Software Services. Besides the box, there's the cassette. We're going to pop into our Dragon 32 to play. Oh, I love how these cassettes and all these manuals have addresses of long gone video game companies. They all exist at some point. You could go to their headquarters. There's an example of the screenshot. We also have the manual. Whoa, an actual manual. It, and it, it breaks it down. Check it out. Yes, it's a popular Star Trek game, and they mean the strategy game, not just the series. Put you in command of the SS Enterprise during the, the war with the evil Klingons. You're told the Empire has been invaded, and it's your mission to destroy the enemy vessels in your assigned sector before star date 2200. So it explains this program on how to load. We got the gist of how to load. It shows us our status with the zero key, the different alert statuses, green, yellow, and red. And then at the top up there, you can see engineering will break down whatever is broken on your ship because you will have things busted out quite a bit. Yes, we're back. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us on Chronologically Gaming. And most of these Star Trek games we see, the way that you you you, you play it is you're just putting in commands. You're typing in a, a command like, uh, let's look at long-range sensors, let's look at short-range sen sensors. And it's, it's showing you here how to do it. There's warp drive, impulse engines, the sensors. Oh, I love this. Look over in the far, the far left. That's what the Enterprise is. We are three pixels, three yellow pixels. Klingons, though, are the blue ones. There's a star base, pulsar, and a star. And then whenever you use impulse engines or whenever you're using your warp drive, this shows you how, how you move. You use eight, uh, eight, uh, the eight different numbers to move around. You have the phasers, uh, photon torpedoes, Empire headquarters. Love the manual. I don't think we saw an actual scan of the manual for the Star Trek games we played in the last episode. This one marks our 59th game we played that's a Star Trek game. And not this show, I'm talking Star Trek strategy games. Let's pop in and play Star Trek by Personal Software Services at some time in October 1982. Some time in October. This was also available on the ZX81, but I couldn't find that one. So we have, we lost out uh, uh, on one Star Trek game that we could play. All right, so to load this up, you just do a quick command, and we are not waiting for the cassette to load. So we fast forward, not giving you the actual 1982 experience here. We would be here all day. Yes, right? Maybe that was part of the first season if they put it that way. Yes, and I love when they say kill the Klingons. Well, presentation is also really, really good. It's playing something for us when we boot the game up. Look at this message from Empire Headquarters to Captain of SS Enterprise. What are we going to do if I'm Captain Kirk? Your mission is defeat the Klingon warships in this sector. Condition green means it's good. And you can see the start date is ticking, da ticking down as we're warping. I believe, yeah, we're, we're warping into deep space to go take care of the Klingons. Failure to do so could become a danger to the whole Empire. 
Scotty the captain, what action level? Oh, so we get to pick what kind of difficulty level we want. Let's go with, uh, right down the middle, let's go with five. That way we won't die too fast, but we know we're gonna die. So thanks to the manual, we know that's the Enterprise right there. And it also shows us at the very, very top right what quadrant we're in. And th every Star Trek game does this. This is really, really nice though. The presentation started with a, a little cutscene, and then they're giving us all the commands. It's, they're all here, what to do. So if I wanna do, for example, uh, long range sensors, I just type three, and then there we go. We get a long range scan. All the Ks or where the Klingons are located. And it says, well, warp drive, sir, yes or no. And if we say yes, then we can go to the quadrant we want. Let's see, where's a Klingon at? Uh, looks like no, no, no Klingons there. I see maybe 6-2 has a lot. Let's try that one. So let's say yes. Let's warp. Yeah, we're going into the void, Marshall. Check off here, we're two captains. So we wanna go 502, and then we wanna warp eight. Engage. So we're sending the commands to play the game, and that's how this strategy game works. There's some of these versions or strategy games that are real time, some of these are turn based. I believe this one is turn based. Yeah, so no Klingons are gonna be attacking us like we saw in the other ones, but I really like the presentation for this one. It's colorful, it's flashy, it's on the Dragon 32. If you had this, this would be probably the best way to play Star Trek on your Dragon 32 right now. All right, so right now in this sector, we have just a few dots, so no Klingons here. All right, I guess I warped to the wrong one. All right, so let's try again, long range scan. And every time we do this, it is using power. And if you run out of power, then the game's over. So you wanna be able to utilize the best power you can, you know, for shields, phasers, and so forth. Okay, so warp drive, yes, we wanna warp. And this time, let's try to go to, let's try O2. I'm still not seeing any Klingons in this sector. Long range scan, so we'll see, no. No long, no long range sensor. I really wanna shoot at somebody. Every time you play the game, it is random. So the play test I've done, they've had sometimes Klingons show up, sometimes they don't. All right, so let's go ahead and go to short range scan. Do we have anything in this sector or is this it? Yeah, what, what we're view seeing in our viewpoint is the short range scan. And then if we want to, we can, can we do red alert? Condition three. Yes, go. Klingons 32, oh, okay. Oh, the alert, I guess, was just our current status. I thought I said alert, not zero. All right, so let's go warp drive. Where to? Let's try 201. And warp eight. Use all the power. In get, oh, yep, nope, we, we, haven't, <laughs> we don't have enough energy for that. We can't warp that fast. All right, let's try it again. See, you have to be able to use your energy correctly. Where to? 201, and let's go, I guess, warp two. Engage. There we go. Yes, isn't that amazing? Someone made a game from 1971 on mainframe and it was copied and copied. This is the 59th game we played that Star Trek games based on that and it's all strategy war games. It's, it's in incredible. All right, so short range scan has nothing, still no Klingons. Present score, yeah, so we're already running out of energy pretty quick, uh, but I'm gonna stop there. It even though we didn't get a, as I break the game, even though we didn't get any Klingons to fight, this one is still a very impressive Star Trek game, but there's so many more that are out there. Uh, this is almost as good as, I'd say, Star Trek 3 that we played for the Coco, and but it's not as good as Video Trek 88 that you could be playing on MS-DOS or IBM PC games. So of all the games you could be playing right now across all home computers, this is a, still a very good game, still a valid game. And like I said, this is the best way you could play it on the Dragon 32 if you had that home computer. We rate these games across all home computers. So across all home computers, would you say this is a broken game? You'd be around the one star range, do you tell yourself this would be a bad game? Then you're around the two-star range. If you tell yourself this is pretty average for all the games you could play, and I could understand it's Star Trek, it's pretty average, you could say they're around the three-star range. If you think it's above average or a gr good game, excellent game, then you're somewhere around the four-star range. And then if you say this is one of the best games you could play across all home computers right now in October 1982, then you'd be somewhere in the five-star range. I'm gonna go with all the games you could play right now, three and a half stars for Star Trek. Very well done for Star Trek. You'd have a lot of fun with this one, and it's a good strategy game too. Look in the chat, I see yeah, average three stars and even subpar considering the other games that you could play up to this point. All right, let's see what our next game is. Next, we're gonna play on our Sinclair ZX Spectrum. This is Star Warrior. Let's check out Star Warrior. Here's the box. Oh, something new. 
for the ZX Spectrum have not seen this box before. This game should not be confused with the Star Quest series that we saw in Epix. They, they had a game called Star Warrior. This is a totally different game than that one. So of all the games we've played so far on the ZX Spectrum, this is our 110th ZX Spectrum game. And bear in mind, this game, this system came out in April this year in 1982. And we've already played 110 games on it. This is the very first time we've seen Visions, the very first game. And there you go, in the bottom right by John Edwards for any ZX Spectrum, depending on you know what memory you have. The front of the box is really, really nice. It still is sci-fi, spacey. We got some fl flashing lights, but it's it's unique. Very good visions. I like it. <laughs> and it is a cassette box. What other artwork do we have for Star Warrior? Oh, we flip over the back. It shows you more info. There you go. Some other things like, oh, man, joystick option. That's a really cool one for the ZX Spectrum. Underground Catacombs. Five different types of aliens. Meteor shower. Wait a second. So maybe there's other game modes in this one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, here we go. Trouble with modern spacecraft is they tend to be restocked with booster crystals every so often. If you wait, wait, what? <laughs> it's not explaining the game. Maybe it's giving us lore. Now the crystals are not a problem. Obtaining them is. Oh, so this is about going in and obtaining the crystals, not dilithium crystals. I still have Star Trek on the mind. Problem is, once you land, you have to go in a maze. The ancient minotaurs would have been proud of. But instead of a minotaur to contend with, you get a psychotic cyborg. He's a legend to come to life. One that shoots back, no less. Did I say shoot back? Forget that. I meant shoots at you. Did, did John, did you write the back of this? That's pretty funny. As far as lore goes. There's our cassette that we're going to pop in our ZX Spectrum to play. Oh, man. With an example of the screenshot. Yeah, Psycho the Cyborg does sound awesome. All right, we have a few different versions, and we have a later re-release that was done by Curry's. This is the very first time you could play this, and the first release of this. Here's Star Warrior by John Edwards and Vision Software at some time in October 1982. No way, that's so cool. Yes, it does allow joystick control instead of just keyboard. Most of the time, we only see keyboard. Um, this one is, I believe, the very first time that the Kimston joystick would be available on this home computer. Ready, set, joystick. Oh, even though I said joystick, it still shows the control key. So you can use the keyboard too. That's pretty cool. Okay, so there's the controls. You can see we got up, down, left, right, fire, and starting the game. Okay, so let's start the game pushing S and go. Whoa, we're in. It's so quiet. Need to fire off something. Oh, there we go. It works. Whoa, wait a second. I got a lot of freedom. It's not just a left, right, and fire kind of game. Most of, the, most of the time we see shooters, I'm expecting just to go left, right, and fire. I actually have some freedom here. I can go up. How far can I go? Whoa, you can go all the way halfway up the screen and then come back down. And look at this. I'm using the joystick to play on a ZX Spectrum. Very, very rare right now. We play plenty of home computers that do offer joystick control, paddle control, and so forth. Uh, notice that the game's speeding up a little bit as I shoot. The more enemies that leave, then they, they speed up. It's so silent in space. All I have is a little bit from the from my shot, and that's about it. Wow, so yeah, it's a shoot 'em up. It's a scrolling shoot 'em up, vertical scrolling shoot 'em up on the ZX Spectrum. Not the first one we've seen, but this one is giving a little bit more control and movement. So as far as the ZX Spectrum goes, this right here is done very, very well. Notice the use of color and, whoa, and the particles. Whenever the enemies shoot, it's like they got spread fire. And whenever I die, I, I explode in a fantastic fashion. Particles everywhere. I love it. Yeah, this is already really good. And the first game we've ever seen by them. So John Edwards, Wade, well done. And as far as shooters go on the ZX Spectrum, we've already seen a few. In fact, some, some people could say the first times you could have played Space Invaders or Galaxian on the ZX Spectrum or Galaxian-like games. Those are already out there that, we, that you could play. This one's unique. It's doing something different, and it's doing it very well. And notice that I can anticipate where the enemies are going to go. Watch these over here. He's going to pop up. Yeah. Oh, wait. And we finished. Sc scroll the screen. We're in a whole new area now. Now we have an asteroid built, and I don't have a shot. All I'm doing is I can just move the ship, but I'm slowly being pulled like I'm getting close to a planet. So there's gravity pulling me down, and, yep, you just have to make sure you don't die. And now we're at a whole nother screen. What in the world? So now it's a it's a top down. Wait, is it a top down? Wait, what kind of maze is this? It looks like... Okay, so it looks like a platformer, but it's not. I can move... 
around freely as if it was a maze game like Pac-Man. Okay, yeah, so I'm not running and jumping. It does kind of look that way, like it's a side view, but it's not a side view. Go and get the crystal. Oh my gosh. Whoa! The psycho! Yes, he, it's a psycho robot. It's got, got some kind of crazy artificial intelligence. Wait, there's no crystal. Should I just touch the ship? Let's just go back to the top. Go, go, go. Yes! We could have just escaped. Oh, and we got new enemy types now. So now we're escaping the planet with the crystal that we had sought after. This is awesome. Right? Nebulous. I just I thought of Major Havoc 2 in the arcades, but that doesn't exist yet. There is no Major Havoc. I don't know what you're talking about. This is so cool. Now, different game modes isn't something new. We, we've seen that in a few home computer games, like uh, Marauder that we played by Sierra Software, or Sierra Online, I mean. They had a game that was went from a fixed shooter to kind of like Berserk. So two game modes in one. Another one we played was Zargs, and Therolean Tunnels did that. This one's awesome, though. For the ZX Spectrum to go from game mode to game mode, every other shooter we've seen so far on the ZX Spectrum was only shooting. It just had the shoot-em-up. But this is a scrolling shoot-em-up. I want to see, does it go any further than this? Like, after I clear out these enemies. What happens next? So it's a shoot-em-up and an arcade maze game. It, it was looking like it was a platformer because it was turned on its side, but it wasn't a platformer. I, I was moving around like a, a, a top-down maze, but they just made your sprite look a little um, a side view. So, so b very bizarre perspective. Come on. Oh. Gosh, and then the spread fire of these guys. Look how many... Can you can you see, can everyone see the pixels that it's shooting out? It's so much, and the color is done so well. Look look at the... Utilizing the colors of the ZX Spectrum. Okay, so what happens now? Different colored... Oh, gosh! <laughs> yeah, right now, I would say... Oh, we already had... Do we have to start at the beginning again? All right, let me push start again. Yeah, you have to go right from the beginning. I want to see how, how far this goes. Another great trope for video games that, that pushes me over the edge is I want to see the next screen. What, what, what's going to be the next thing that comes up? And this one gives me those vibes. So of ZX Spectrum games, I would say of all the games you could play right now on the ZX Spectrum, this is five stars. This is one of the best games you could play right now because of those different game modes. And now I want to see how far it'll go. If I don't die, the spread shot for these is very difficult. The controls, though, is really nice because I have the freedom to move around more than just going left and right. I, re I really like that. So since this is going to be competing against other home computers, not just the ZX Spectrum, you have to consider all the other releases we've seen. Like, um, there's another game we played called Twerps that had different game modes. This is the very first time we had a video game, though, go from a, a scrolling shoot-em-up like this to a top-down maze game. We, we played uh, some games that went to Berserk, kind of like a top-down uh, run-and-gun, kind of kind of Berserk-style game, but this is the first time we've seen it just go maze. But man, this is awesome. Wait a second, can I scroll? If the enemies can, I should, right? Yes, I can, I can pop in. Oh yeah, and pop back out, there we go. Whoa, that stray pixel! Did you see that? Oh, and if you die, all the enemies come back. Oh my gosh. Brutal, but uh, we've seen worse. It's really not that bad. <laughs> yeah, and I'm with you. This is very, very well done for a game for the ZX Spectrum. And the very first game you could play with the Kimston joystick. We played some games on the ZX Spectrum that use the Cursor joystick and the Sinclair joystick. But um, regardless of what joystick you use, any joystick would be great. Let's see if we can sneak through here. I am only firing one shot at a time. But the freedom of, of movement is really nice. I oh, gosh, the spread. If you look at the top right, that's the number of lives I have. But you have to be able to continue c clearing all the enemies from one screen and then move on to the next one. Well, it looks like we won't be able to see if it goes past the uh, the uh, the second asteroid, asteroid belt or if it just changes the colors. It does a palette swap. I really want to know if there's other enemy types. It did boast there was five different enemy types, so maybe it... It loops between these four, and the fifth one is the, the Psycho Robot, which was really, really fun. Maze games, top-down, chasing you around, usually aren't that fun. That was pretty good. <laughs> and 
being the first game that Visions ever did, this is this is really nice. So I can anticipate you're going to go off that side of the screen. You're coming back. I'm going to get you. And the game does a little bit of a speed up. Kind of reminds me of Space Invaders when the enemies leave the screen. <laughs> then the game gets faster and faster. That's what it's doing here. Oh, I got to get away from the walls. That's so dangerous. Nope. Get away. Nice and easy. I'm just floating along, letting it fall. I'm, I'm not doing anything. It's just pull the gravity's pulling me in. Then you make it to the maze, maze area. Let's get away from the psycho robot. Oh my gosh. Get the crystal and get out. Oh man, that is so intense. And it throws you off for a second because I believe that's the very first top-down maze game where your character is turned on their side like a platformer. We have not seen that. So it, it feels bizarre at first. You, you feel like you should be running and jumping, but you, you can't. That would have been nuts, though, if we played a scrolling shoot 'em up and then it changes from that into a arcade platformer like Donkey Kong. That would be that would be nuts. Now the the bullets that are firing off here, they're, they're, there's some stray ones because it's spread fire, so it's a little hard to see, especially when they blend in with the stars in the background. Okay, we got one ship left. We can do it. Let's see what the next one is after this. Oh gosh, you see that? It's it is so tight. Okay, here we go. Nice and easy. Looks like they didn't change all the colors. You got to be see. I'm constantly being pulled down, so you got to think. Oh, look at the artifact. It changed the color on the side a little bit. <laughs> All right, that's that's fun. So there you go, Star Warrior for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. A very, very well done game of all the games you could be playing right now across all home computers. Now, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, five stars. Of all the games you could play across all home computers, because we haven't seen this game mode, I, I would have said around three and a half, you know? But because... Uh, going from two different, uh, three different game modes, and they switch up the, the the gameplay for something a little fresh or new. I'm gonna go four stars. So four stars for Star Warrior, and a really good showing on the ZX Spectrum. Man, across ho all home computers, that's awesome. All right, after that, let's see what's next. All right, coming up next is the TRS-80 Color Computer. Let's play some Starfire. Starfire. I've heard that one before. Starfire. Oh, that's right. This should be confused with Starfire that we saw in the arcades by, um, by, uh, not by Epics. That we saw in the arcades by Exidy. So we played a game that was called Starfire and it was, and it looked just like Star Wars. So this is a completely different Starfire. And oh man, they did it with, the, it's the same company that did Donkey Monkey. I love that one. That's awesome. All right, so this one is our 150th game we played on the TRS-80 Color Computer. Congratulations, the Coco has 150 games that are out there. And there's an example of the screenshot, and that's all we have. That's it. Congratulations, the Coco has 150 games. And we have a, oh, we have a homebrew manual. So there's our controls. I believe this is from Curtis. Thanks so much, Curtis, telling us how to play the game. Move the ship up and down, forward, change directions, phaser, smart bomb, and hyperspace. Ready, set, got it. Let's pop in some Starfire and play. This is by Harvey Brofman, published by Intel Electronics at some time in October 1982. All right, so load. I believe it's machine language. Oh, wait, star. Delete. No. Did I already lose it? Why isn't it deleting? Oh, I think I know why. I remember. We'll try it again. Coming at us again. Make sure we type in correctly because I put some hotkeys in so I'd be able to play the game smoothly. Ready? Nice and easy now. You want to do load machine language star fire. There. Nice and easy now. The only other game we've played by Intellectronics at this point was Donkey Monkey. And so this one is the second one by Harvey Brofman. Here we go. And get it. <laughs> oh, Marshall already knows it's Cheesy Defender. Ooh. Get a nice flashy screen. Show us all the point values. Way to go, Harvey. Great job. All right, so this one is... I want to get in the game first. There we go. And we're in. I can go t I can go up and down. Look at the nice little radar at the end. Oh, wait. That's wrong button. There's my... Oh, did I warp? I warped into something. Let's try it again. There's my fire. So you can see myself on the radar going up and down. 
Can we move forward? Nice. Yes. Okay, so we have... <laughs> it, is, it does feel kind of like a, a derpy defender. You, the aliens do look like defender aliens, and um, I am able to move myself when I want to move, so it's not auto-scrolling. We've seen some games that were kind of like Defender, but they played more like... They play, play more like uh, the auto-scrolling uh, games rather than... Defender, you, you have control of your ship to move around. Come on. We did it! First wave completed, and we saved everybody. Nobody turned into a mutoid. But I want to make sure we can turn around. There's my, oh, there's my warp. Let me see. There it is. Ooh, yes. So you can do a flip the reverse. Okay, so it has the same button layout, but mind you, this does not work with the joystick. This is only for the keyboard. So you gotta whip the keyboard out on your Coco to play this one. Oh, taking them. Do I gotta save them or do they die? They do die. You have to save them? Oh, that's really hard to try to save them with this. Now the controls, because it's keyboard only, and it's, it's already a little bit slower or lower than we would have seen for other games. Oh, that's true. No, we can't shoot the humanoids. See, it, it only lets me go that far down. <laughs> the sound effects are so lacking. Can you even hear the tiny little blips? It's making little bitty, little bitty blippy sounds. We're going wave by wave, though, and it's working all right. Radar at the top really doesn't scroll with us either. Notice that as I wrap around the screen, then it wraps around with us. So you can already already see the Defender... The, the Defender ish version of this. This is the 34th game we played that is a, a variant of Defender. Not to be confused with official Defender games. This is all 34 games that play pretty much like Defender or pretty close. That's a lot. And that's across all platforms. Can we go in again? Yes, go. All right. So we also have, yes, we also have the, the clear all hyperspace bomb. Don't forget those. Uh, yes, minimal is a good way to put it, <laughs> L. Curtis B. <laughs> go, go, go. It's just little bitty blips and bloops. So if you've ever, if you've ever played Defender in the arcades, I highly recommend it. Playing Defender in the arcades is amazing. The sound is, is incredible. So this one is, I can understand why you would call this one, it's just a minimal version of Defender. At this point, of those 34 games we played like Defender, this is the fourth game we've played that's like Defender for the TRS-80 color computer alone. <laughs> so the other ones we played were Offender, Protectors, and Avenger. I still give Offender the nod as the best way to play Defender right now on your TRS-80 color computer. This one, uh, I'm kind of in the, in the range of saying it's, it's average for all the games you could be playing across all home computers. Oh, another game over. It does include all the controls, and it's not trying to be a scramble game. It's it's actual Defender. You can move around. Yeah, it's lacking a little something, but it still would be fun and enjoyable. The reason why it doesn't get higher marks of the other games we played out there are other Defender-like games. Keyboard only, too. So, yeah, I can't give it that. All right, thank you for playing Starfire on your TRS-80 color computer. Of all the games you can play right now across all home computers, I'm looking over the chat. I see some subpars, two and a half stars. Yeah, two and a half. I'm going to go three stars. I'll be a little bit more generous because it allows all the controls. It actually works, works well. I didn't see any hit detection, things like that. Yeah. So I'm seeing mostly two and a half from all the home computer, at least from the chat. Very, very nice for Starfire. All right, so there you go. Sadly, it's time to put our video game playing on pause. It was a very interesting and fun evening. We got so many more games to come. We're still playing all the video games released at some time in October 1982. The way we do it is we just put the release date as October 31st, 1982, and then we just play them all in alphabetical order. We don't know exactly when they came out in October. Be sure to, be, be sure to tune in next time on Chronologically Gaming. We're going to have the the weirdest, wackiest day in October 1982, and we're going to play some of the strangest games that we've ever seen on the show. That's it for today, and like I always say, what are you gaming on? Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without Launchbox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. 
Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.